Hello everyone, this is Arav. In the previous video, we showed you how to set up the Nutanix cluster using the Nutanix Foundation tool. In today's video, I will show you how to log in to the Prism console and I will navigate you through the Prism dashboard. As you all know, Prism is the management platform for the Nutanix cluster that is used to perform the day-to-day -day administrative tasks. After watching this video, you will find out how easy it is to manage the entire Nutanix cluster through a single dashboard. So now we will open the web browser. In the search box, we will enter the virtual IP of the cluster with the HTTPS and the port which is 9440. For our cluster, the virtual IP is 192.168.177.220 But for your cluster, you have to use the virtual IP that you have entered. The port is 9440. It will say the connection isn't private, but you can continue anyways. Here, you will enter the credentials. As you can see, the dashboard has now opened. Here, at the first, you will see the hypervisor summary. The name of the hypervisor and the version are shown here. Below that, the storage summary is given. Here, the uh, storage usable by logical and physical storage are given. Below that, the VM summary is given. The number of VMs that are on, that are off, suspended and paused all are given here. Beneath that, the address summary is given. It shows the number of blocks, the hosts and the model of the block. For us, it shows that we have one block and three hosts and our model is NX3060G6. Here, there are three charts given about the cluster-wide controller data. The first chart shows IOPS, the second chart shows input archbook bandwidth, and the third chart shows controller latency. Below that, it will show the CPU uses of the cluster and the memory uses of the cluster. Then, in health, it will show the health of the host, disk, VMs, etc. If it is green, it, is, it means OK. If it is orange, it means warning. And if it is red, it means critical. Then next to that, it shows the critical alerts. Here, any critical alerts that happen on the cluster will be shown. Below that, there is warning alerts. Any warnings that happen will be shown here. Then below that, it is info alerts. Any alerts that are not the risky will be shown here. Then in the events, it will show the number of events that have happened recently. Events are things such as VM creation, deletion, power off, power on, etc. Then in the data resiliency status, it will show if you have chosen RF2 in the setup and there are two copies of the data in the cluster, then it will show OK. And if you had chosen RF3 the, and there are three copies of the data, then it will show OK. But if the conditions aren't met, then it will show critical. We will head to the settings page. In this page, I will show you a few general settings that are used most frequently. The first is cluster details. In this page, you will be able to see the cluster UUID and ID. The cluster subnet is also given here. You can also change the name of the cluster here. The virtual IP that we use to navigate to this page is also given here. The ISCSI data services IP is also given here. Below that, you will be given an option to retain deleted VMs. This means that when a VM is deleted, it can be restored within 24 hours of its deletion. Let's 
head on to the next page that is expand cluster. In this page, it allows you to add one or multiple hosts to an existing cluster. This page makes it easy to add new nodes to a, an existing cluster within a few clicks. The next page is licensing. In this page, you are able to view details about current licenses that are applied to this cluster. We have the Acropolis Starter License. You are able to upload licenses that you have purchased. The next setting is Upgrade Software. In this setting, it shows you the current version of the software on the cluster such as AOS, File Server, Hypervisor, NCC and Foundation. You are also able to download new versions of the software that are, that are recently available. You can use this page to upgrade software but it is recommended to use Alcium to upgrade software. We will talk about Alcium in a separate video. Today, we have talked about a few general settings that are used frequently and we will talk about the remaining settings in a separate video as well.